What is good, YouTube? Quinn Wade Basketball Analysis coming to you on a quick video. I wanted to let you guys know I got some new merchandise available, not just t-shirt anymore. I got different type of t-shirt, different type of shirts and logos that you can purchase on my spread shirt and also hoodies now. We have expanded and added more to the channel and more merchandise for the brand. Thanks for supporting. It will be in the description and the links will be in the comment section below. Thanks for helping me and supporting the movement. Quinn Wade, Basketball Analysis. I'm going to check out the video. What's good, YouTube? Quinn Wade, Basketball Analysis. Come to y'all with a video to talk about my last award before the season start in a couple hours. We're going to talk about the Defensive Player of the Year and who I think will win this award. And I'm going to go with my top five and my honorable mentions. And um, I'm going to tell you who I think is number one. Uh, who actually going to win the award? Clay Thompson. He's in my honorable mention because he said this year he's going to really try to focus on being a better defender than he already was. He, he hasn't been on the All-NBA first team in a while. A lot of people respect him as a two-way player. He is big and athletic um, and very strong. And it makes... It makes players hard. It make it hard on players to score on him because of those things, especially at that shooting guard position. When a lot of these players are six four, six five, six six, he's taller and more bigger than a lot of these guys, and it really helps him. And he's good on his feet, and he does a decent job of not fouling. Um, I still think he can be a little bit more active um, with steals and trying to block shots, while also trying to contain his guy off the dribble while he's trying to stay in front of him. I think Clay Thompson definitely can work on a little bit more fundamentals. And if he does those little small things and tries a little bit harder, maybe he can get back on that All-NBA first team with the Golden State Warriors and, you know, establish himself back as probably the best defensive two guard other than Jimmy Butler in the NBA because it's really just them two at the top. Um, other than that, all the other players are solid. And Victor Oladipo is a guy – that's going to be in that mentioning, too, when it comes to defensive um, identity at that guard position. So um, you got to give both of those guys credit. Clint Capella, I think that with the loss of Trevor Ariza and the loss of Luke Bob Mute, they're going to have to rely a lot on their team defense. And even though they don't have the great individual defenders as they did last year, they're going to have to rely a lot on Clint Capella switching. I feel like he did an excellent job of that last year. And I think he can build upon that and do it even better this year. And they're going to need him to do that. They're going to need him to anchor that defense. They're going to need him to block shots, contest, and switch. And he was able to do it very well for a guy that's still learning the game. And I think that building upon that, he can do it even better than he did before. But not only that, he can be a great rim protector. And defensive rebounding, closing out possessions, getting stops and closing out possessions is a part of defense. And I think he can do that even better than he did last year. So um, I think Clint Capella... If you really want him to earn his money, he should definitely try to be a defensive anchor. I'm not saying that he never was, but he needs to continue to grow in that direction. If he's not going to be able to spread out the floor, hit threes, at least try to master the defensive side of the ball. And maybe one day he can rise up to the top and actually win this award. And I don't think it's far-fetched or crazy um, that he, he could do it. So um at the end of the day my next guy is Draymond Green in the top five I haven't really been a fan of Draymond Green as well as much as other players I mean other teams and other people I feel like Draymond Green has been one of the better defenders that's why he's in my top five just because of respect alone but I feel like he lost a step I feel like he still is a decent anchor he still does guard the post very well for him to be undersized I feel like he does make a lot of people's shots a lot more difficult to get off um, but I think he can even raise his intensity a little bit more and get more fight and dirtier. Um, I wouldn't say really dirtier. I think he can really, um, you know, try a little harder. I feel like he got a little bit more relaxed and a little bit more complacent. Um, and that's why Rudy Gobert and Joel was able to pass him up. He just hasn't really put his full effort, just like Klay Thompson, into being a lockdown defender, which means you can't really take that many plays off. Um, especially when you have a team like this that can switch everything and have length and size and athleticism at every position um, and has great help defense. They should be able to lock people down 
on a consistent basis. But even last year, this Golden State team, they was off and on defensively. Yes, they still was one of the better defensive teams. But even if you look at the Houston series and other series in, in the playoffs, their defense wasn't really elite like it used to be two, three years ago. Maybe it was just everybody being complacent. Maybe they thought it was just too easy. Maybe they were just bored. Maybe they just was looking for a challenge after they went down 3-2 against the Houston Rockets. But whatever it is, I feel like KD... Clay and Dre um, definitely need to go more harder on the defensive end and carry just a little bit more. And I think that they'll get them back to that stingy, unstoppable defense. But I do feel like Dre and Clay took a step back. And I want to see if they're going to really put that effort and energy to, you know, get back to where they was, which is all NBA first team defenders. And if they're able to do that, that's going to help the Warriors um, have a great season and get, get them an easy ride to the NBA Western Conference Finals and then to the NBA Finals. And hopefully they can put in eight um, DeMarcus Cousins and anchor the defense with him too because they are missing a, a, a guy in the middle that's big, that's tough, and that's going to rebound the ball a lot. But can he really be an anchor himself? That's the question. Um, AD, I think AD, the only reason why he's not going to win this award because his team defense is not great enough. He's a great individual defender. He's a great help defender. He's a great rim protector, and he makes shots tough. And he hasn't been fouling as much either, which means he's getting a lot of clean contests and a lot of clean, um, you know, straying you away from the basket. And a lot of people forget that, too, that when you can cover room and you can make up space or you can anchor that defense, sometimes it's a shot that you, you contest. Sometimes it's a shot that you deny. Sometimes it's a shot that they rethink about going to the paint because they don't want to get it blocked or they rush a shot. So mentally, I think AD has a lot of people when he moves by them or he's in the vicinity of them. Um, I definitely think he changes the mindset and, and the outlook of the player, and that's why he's been a high block guy because he really puts effort and energy in defensive the, 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 in defense but one of the problems with Anthony Davis is definitely the fact that his team hasn't been collectively good and when you usually win defense player of the year your team usually is a great defensive team and that's something that AD hasn't really been able to do um, which ain't his fault because his teammates still got to guard and do their job and then they don't really have great perimeter defenders other than Drew Holiday so I don't really think the team defense is going to be great enough I don't think he can really um, carry this team to the top five defense yet um, they still need some more pieces and they still need some more size especially on the perimeter and Nikola Miritic and Solomon you know they're not great defenders anyway so that hurts their team defense which hurts his chances of winning defensive player of the year um, three Kawhi Leonard I wanted to pick Kawhi Leonard that's going to be a defensive player of the year but even in preseason he doesn't look um, as engaged as he used to maybe he's still learning um, how to come back. He wants to play his way back into shape. He wants to play his way and, and focus on just being healthy and just getting his mindset right. I picked him on the winning MVP, but to me, he was the best de individual defender. He was a great team defender. Um, the the He going to a team that had a great defensive concept last year, and he is an upgrade over DeMar DeRozan, plus you get Danny Green, but Kawhi Leonard hasn't really played that much, and you know, because he missed all last year, including the playoffs. So I think that he's going to be a little rusty, um, but he's still going to get on that all NBA defensive team. But I don't know if he's going to be great and dominant enough like he was two, three years ago when he really just had to focus on scoring. And, I mean, taking easy open shots and mid-range jumpers and get a little isolations every once in a while. But his main focus was being a lockdown defender. I think in this Toronto team, they need him to do a little bit more to carry the offense. I think they need him to do a little bit more um, of creating his own shot, which possibly could hurt him being a great dominant defender because he's going to have to do a lot more offensively. That's just my personal opinion. But at the same time, I definitely would like to see Kawhi Leonard established himself back as the best perimeter defender, and I think he will be over Draymond Green and Klay Thompson and Jimmy Butler. And if so, he's going to be All-NBA first team again, but I doubt that he win Defensive Player of the Year just this season. But if he does come back with that fight and that nastiness, then I definitely could see him being first at is I think it's going to be hard for him to do it, but if he do, he, he's going to finish in the top three. Um, Joel Embiid, um, they was a great defensive team, but this is what I was saying about AD. They have better defenders. They have better size. They have better players in general, um, and they have more chemistry 
And, you know, they bring in back the same nucleus, just adding in Markel Fultz and losing a couple of defend I mean, couple outside shooters. So I think since they was a great defensive team last year, I think that they're only going to get better this year with Ben Simmons being a mismatch and a solid defender at his position and Joel Embiid being a great help defender and a great shot blocker and a great um, rebounder. I think that he's going to get more love this year. But can he really bring it home? I don't really know until I see it. But he, he came close to winning it last year, and he might win it this year, but I just don't think that he's going to take the cake just yet. Um, I think it's going to be Rudy Gobert. And Rudy Gobert is the guy I picked for the last three years, and he won it last year, which is well-deserved. The only thing that stops Rudy Gobert from winning this award is injuries. Um, if he gets a major injury or an injury that takes him out for a couple of months like he's been doing the last couple of years, then I can see somebody like Joel Embiid or Kawhi Leonard making a run because they're going to play more games and they're going to have more chance to show themselves being dominant, which is going to hurt Rudy Gobert's chances of actually becoming Defensive Player of the Year. Other than that, if he stays healthy, he is the best defender in the world. Um, he is a great anchor. He's long, athletic, very mobile. Um, his ability to help, his ability to stay in that paint and really clog it up, whether he's helping or just anchoring it or just communicating to his teammates where to go, when to switch, when to be, uh, when to push them to a direction so he can contest a shot or make them run back out of the paint or even force up a floater or a jumper, that's going to be tough. Now he does have his flaws just like everybody else, but you know every time he's healthy, the Utah Jazz is one of the best teams in the NBA because of his defense. Um, and he's just that great of an individual defender that he makes everybody around him better, everybody around him more relaxed, and everybody around him more comfortable because they know that they have him anchoring that defense in the middle. Only bad part about Rudy Gobert, he's not a great perimeter defender. Teams like to shoot over him. Teams like to force him to pick up poison, whether it's we're going to force you to give up a lot more dunk or we're just going to pull up on mid-range and threes. You have to give up something. And if that's what you're going to give up, contested threes and long twos, you'll take it if you're Utah, and that's what they've been able to do. Now, the only thing that's really hard is that it's not too many great players that dominate off the dribble with jumpers, and that's really what helped him become this defender, forcing to take that paint and that floater area away and forcing the longer shots is what people don't want to do anymore because of analytics, and he's basically forcing you to do what the analytics don't want you to do, and that's why he has been able to be a great defender and bring home this award last year. I do think that he win it again this year, but next year it's going to be a lot more competition, and maybe he lose it this year, maybe he just get injured, maybe he just stay healthy and become the dominant defender that everybody's picking the Utah Jazz to finish in the top four, and if they really want to finish in that top four, they're going to need Rudy Gobert, and they finish in that top four, even top three seed in the West, maybe even top two, we don't really know, um, because it depends on how healthy he is, that's just going to help his case, and it's going to help him win the award if they're winning and they're still one of the best defensive team, if not the best defensive team. And this team does need him. And that helps the value of how great of a defender he really is. Cause you see the difference night and day when he's on the court and when he's not on the court and the team just isn't the same with them off the court. So he's the most valuable defender. He's the best defender. Um, and I think he can build upon that this year and win it back to back. Um, let me know what you guys think, who you think going to be defensive player of the year, who you think going to win. Is it going to be Gobert? Is it going to be Embiid? Is it going to be another player that maybe I'm sleeping on? Maybe I'm not thinking about who I overrated, who I underrated, and who you really think should win this award. Let me know in the comment section below. Check out my website, analysisplayround.com. Link up in the description in the comment section below. Check out my Facebook page, analysisplayround.com. Link up in the description in the comment section below. Also, check out my spread shirt. There you can find NBA, my brand, hoodies, sweaters, T-shirts. And also, you can find accessories like pillowcases, water bottles, and other things um, available on my spread shirt. Also, if you want a regular T-shirt, you can change the color of the T-shirt. You can change the color of the logo. That will be available on my Facebook page. You can message me if you just want a standard T-shirt. I got images of the shirts. Look through, pick the one you want, how you want it, and I can get it shipped out to you. Or you can always check my spread shirt for more options and more accessories and more branding items there. Let me know what you guys think and who you think will win Defensive Player of the Year and who you think I might have slept on. I'm gone.